Boom. I'm on. We're good. I'm on. We're good. It's like just we made it back. This. I know I did. Just made it back. Yeah. Wow. North was... Korea? Really? It's not North Korea, right? It's Listen, in South Korea. How much North time have you spent with him on the road? North Korea? If you hang out with him All long the sanctions enough. Sanctions against North Korea. Is your mic on? Just making sure. All right. Oh, the red light's on. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. John just John just is running again, All so right. I just wanted to make sure. All right. Well, Listen, Jerry Jerry and I were in G- yeah, you He says sucker. some dumb things once in a while. And one of the dumbest things that he said, that's not even the dumbest thing he said today. This morning, he comes in and he goes, Jerry told me I could wear jeans today at work. <laughs> and I'm like, I Jerry told you. I gave, I gave, him, the gave me the day, day off. off. I told him not. I, I gave I, me the listen, day off. when he's on that bus, he's yours. <laughs> when he's in the office, he's <laughs> this guy. I prefer my bus boss. Yeah. Of course you do. Like, of course you do. Bus yeah. boss is great. What do you think yeah, he comes down there and hangs around with us all day? <laughs> listen, I'm no dummy. I know what's yeah. going on. I think they enjoy it down there. They get a laugh, and then they go, yeah, we do have please fun, yeah. please get out of here. <laughs> please. Please. Not a for, chance. Not for, a chance. for the love of all things all day good. If you want. Yeah, it'd be great. I'd love to, but, uh, yeah. Fortunately, i got to go yeah, to my – Yeah, you have a work boss, too. I have too. my upstairs <laughs> boss. Yeah, you have an upstairs <laughs> boss, too. What does Mike uh, Hart say? He's got the he's got the work wife, and then he's got the, yeah, the right. wife at home. There so you go. So, uh, Jerry. Welcome back, Coach. Thank you. It's good five, to be back. Five wins in a row for this Condors team. Uh, you know, you could just feel that momentum just with each game, each period kind of picking up uh, for this Condors team and just spirits of high going into here to this homestand. Yeah, winning's uh, contagious. You know, you just get a little swagger about you. I think the biggest reason we've been winning is our D has been playing really well. They've been moving the puck up the ice, uh, no uh, dusting it off, quick ups. Our guys have been coming back. I think our four check's been good, and we've gotten pretty solid goaltending. So that combination has uh, put us five games up, so hopefully we can just keep it going. This team's really gotten a lot of timely goals, too, lately. I mean, the offense has picked up. You know, you tack a couple of six spots up on the board in one week, and it makes you look good and feel good. But, you know, the goals are coming when you need them. Well, earlier on in the season for our wins, we relied a lot on our special teams. Our PK was good, and our PP, we got some timely goals from our PP. Uh, the good news right now is we're scoring five on five. Our PP has been, uh, you know, we've gotten some good looks. It just hasn't gotten in the net. So if we can put the combination together and, and continue to play well five on five and our special teams uh, gets to where it was at the beginning of the season, who knows what can happen. Be dangerous. Yeah, let's hope so. Well, and, and on Sunday, Joey Lelegia hops out of the lineup. A little bit of rotation here for the Seconders defensive unit. Just kind of take us through that uh, now with seven defensemen with Marty Gurnett going down to Norfolk. Yeah, uh, you know, it was important for us to get Marty playing again. Uh, he hasn't played since San Antonio. So uh, to get him uh, playing uh, with 7D and rotating 7D right now, it's not easy. And it would have been tough to get Marty in the lineup. So we sent him to Norfolk to get him some playing time. But, uh, yeah, we've got seven capable D that, uh, you know, nobody deserves to come out based on their play. So we're just going to rotate seven. Yeah, and that's the way we have to do it right yeah. now. Like, uh, like I said, everybody's playing well. It's not uh, based on play right now. It's just based on where you're at in the lineup. I mean, you've said a couple of times, you know, that competition inside your lineup is very healthy. I mean, do you think the way they're playing is reflecting that right now? That's a great question. I think you're right. I think uh, even with our forwards, uh, you know, we've got healthy bodies. We've got guys itching to get back in the lineup. So, you know, when you're playing, you understand that, uh, you know, you're playing for that guy that's up in the stands too. Uh, you know, he wants to be playing, so you want to give your best so that, um, you know, you're not taken out of the lineup. So uh, healthy competition from within is really, really important. We talked uh, before the game on Friday uh, in Ontario about Anders Nielsen coming down to the to the Condors and, looking to find some confidence, looking to get his game back uh, to where it was at the beginning of the season. Two wins, two very sharp starts uh, for Anders Nielsen over the weekend. Yeah, I thought his rebound control was outstanding. He's uh, he's a big guy. Even in practice, you're coming down and you're looking at the net. There's not much to shoot at. He's uh, He was a big body. Uh, he came down. Uh, he's played well, and hopefully, uh, you know, he just gets his confidence and can start rolling again. Because at the beginning of the year, he was playing well. Like, you know, he was pushing Talbot for the number one spot, and he tailed off a little bit. And as a goaltender, once your confidence starts to go, you start to question certain things. So to get him back in the net, get him playing again, get him some wins, and for him to play well, was good for his confidence. Now with Laurent Brassois up in the NHL when he was here uh, with the Condors and, and he to Laura Kynan, it was Brassois three out of four basically if you, if you kind of looked up and down. Uh, what's kind of the breakdown? Uh, do you see it here moving forward with, with Nielsen and, and Laura Kynan? Because both have, have played well here over the last week. Yeah, uh, E2 has played really well and uh, we, you know, we wanted to get him in on Sunday but again, uh, uh, 
Nielsen had to play, so we put him in uh, again on Sunday against San Jose. And he, he performed well. Like I said, his rebound control, he's tracking the puck, he's big in the net, he's fighting through traffic, he's doing all the things that are necessary for him to get back to the NHL. So hopefully he can just build upon his early success here, and when he does get the opportunity to go back up, he just translates to uh, him playing well up in the NHL. So you got five wins in a row here. Uh, you, go, you go on a you know uh, a road trip, you visit three cities in California, you come back with wins in all three of them. Now you're home for five straight, so... I mean, this is a 10-game winning streak we're looking at, right? <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. After a successful road trip, that first game back at home is always kind of uh, – so that's something that we're going to focus on here over the next two days. It's just like let's be prepared. Uh, let's not uh, rest on our laurels here. Uh, we've won a couple of games, and that's great. Uh, but, uh, you know, those are in the past. You just right. got to look forward to the game on Friday right now and what we have to do to prepare ourselves for that game. Yeah, and Holt, you mentioned the, the close games. You know, it's not like you guys won, you know, in this five games and just blew everybody out. You know, winning close games, you said winning is contagious. You know, for my money, early in the season, the Condors weren't finding ways to win those one-goal games, those tight games, getting the goals when you need, getting the save when you yep. need it. Um, does it feel like that's happening here over the last month? Not yeah, just the last five years. A games. little bit, yeah. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, we couldn't close out those games that maybe we had a lead in or, or we felt that we were going to win, and for some reason we lost them in the third period. But that's all part of the process during the course of the season. You just build upon and you learn from your mistakes and what you have to do to correct them. And I think that uh, over the course of the season to this point, we've just gotten better as a group and we're starting to understand what it takes to win those close games. Talk about the, the standings and the playoff picture. Is that something that's that's mentioned at all here over the second half of the season, whether it be on a weekly basis or a daily basis in terms of guys looking at, at where the team is, you know, how are we performing in terms of where are we in the standings, what's going on, what do we need to do, what do we need to root for, or is it just mainly just what the Condors are doing here in Bakersfield? Well, I think it's human nature to look at the standings, and guys do that. I think we're all a little guilty of that, but you can't focus on who's behind you or who's ahead of you. You've got to focus on what you have to do that particular day to get better. We've got, it's been our theme all year. We're just going to focus on the process of what we have to do that day to make us better. You know, Clink Hammer, Kara, Miller, I mean, the, the point holes that they put up – is there a science behind how you're picking some of these lines, or do you just kind of go off feel, or are you matching styles that, that all of a sudden you can just put three guys together and it just works? Well, me, JF, and Tony, we, we talk about chemistry between lines and who kind of feeds off one another, and a little bit it's trial and error. Like, you know, you try guys together, and then they might have success uh, for a little bit, and then they might taper off, and this might happen to these guys. Hopefully it doesn't. But uh, right now they, they seem to uh, – be uh, happy playing with one another. I think that's important. They feed off one another. Uh, we've got some, you just talked about JJ coming back and Clink coming back and Gaz. Now we've gotten a little bit bigger. We've gotten bigger up front, and that's huge. And you can see that translating into the way we protect the puck, uh, the way that we grind teams down defensively. Our forecheck has always been good, but having those big bodies leaning on you over the course of 60 minutes wears you down. So I think that's been um, a big factor in our success here recently. Um, so hopefully we can just kind of build upon it. Those lines can just get more and more confident together. And our defensive pairings, uh, we've rotated all seven, which is good. So every guy we know that can play with another guy. So like I said, it, it's it's good right now, but uh, it's just in the past. Now we got to focus on Friday night. Bartle talked about him kind of being an unsung hero back there on the blue line of this season. But Jordan Osterley on the show later today, what has he meant to this Connors team on the blue line? Because you want to see guys develop from year one to year two, and I think you're certainly seeing that with, with, with Jordan. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jordan's biggest asset is his skating ability and the way he can separate uh, himself from opposition. When he's moving the puck quickly, uh, when he's walking the line offensively, when he's joining the rush, he's really effective. And I think his defending has got better. He understands that he's not an overly big guy, so he's got to use his sticks, he's got to take away hands, he's got to have good angles, he's got to have a good gap. And uh, the biggest thing that we've noticed is his defensive play here over the last three or four weeks has really improved. You almost have more size up front than you do back on your blue line, but uh, it's worked. I mean, you're, yeah, you're yeah. top 3D. Or... Yeah, yeah. Well, the biggest thing with them is they can all skate and they're mobile, so they can skate the puck out of traffic. If they can't find an, a source to move it up quickly, then they can skate it out and create separation, get the line, get it in, and we can establish our forecheck. And that's that's key. Getting the puck out of your own zone quickly is pivotal to any team's success. How good w was this road trip, not only in terms of being able to get some wins, but guys able to get together, and there was a couple off days on the road, guys able to go out to dinner, maybe taking a movie, just guys being able to hang out with one another here over the last week. Yeah, that's one thing that we've found on this club. Uh, there's no clicks. Uh, you see different groups and different pockets of guys always hanging out. Uh, you know, But it's important that uh, guys get to know one another off, 
uh, one another off the ice. You know that you got to, in order for you to play for somebody, you got to care about them. In order for to care about them, you got to know a little bit about their family, their background, their history, how they are, and you know that just kind of snowballs into a positive direction. My one tidbit I found out on the road this this past week: Rob Klinkhammer's son's name. Gunner Knox, That's which I name. think is oh, the yeah. greatest yeah. name. Gunner Knox, Gunner, Gunner Knox, Knox. Kaver. Yeah. If that kid isn't ready to be a tough guy, I don't know what. <laughs> that is a great name. Awesome yeah. name. Uh, this weekend, Condors home to San Diego Friday night. They're going to be looking for some revenge here. The Condors have had their number over the last couple of weeks, but then Saturday night, a team that Condors have struggled with this season in Texas. So they presented some problems. They're coming in hot to Bakersfield, but a big weekend set here for this Bakersfield. Yeah, team. a huge weekend. Uh, again, uh, you know, we had some success on the road there. Now we got to translate those wins into. To wins at home so we're going to focus on Friday night and get ready and do what we have to do to prepare for them and uh, hopefully we have a good result I'm looking forward to it I'm what do you think of the cereal bowls huh yeah, uh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah, your what's that. your yeah, favorite cool, cereal? Yeah. yeah, favorite My cereal. Favorite coach. cereal. Uh, Are you an oatmeal, oatmeal guy? Oatmeal guy. Yeah, steel cut oatmeal for sure. Of course. And then after that, it would go shredded wheat, and then probably Cheerios. Yeah. Almost, I love the Cheerios. Yeah. No sugar. No, no sugar. sugar. And no sugar. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, honey, they got honey, lucky honey, charms yeah, every once no, in a while. Come oh. on, that's just, <laughs> it's like smoking, man. Not You're lucky he eats some pizza when he comes in. Tried not to, but it just looks so good today. Yeah. Thanks to Mike. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, and Mike Griffin for bringing the pizza. Always perfect. It's always a nice treat. If he knows what Jerry, we appreciate pleasure, it guys. as always. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Coach. Yep, yep. Condors Thanks, home Friday and Saturday. Take on San Diego Friday night. Take on Texas on Saturday. Big weekend tickets. BakersfieldCondors.com. Give the Condors front office a call right now. We're open 324-PUCK. And uh, if you're watching on My45, come on down. We're giving away cereal bowls Saturday night. So it's, uh, it's a great thing. Yeah, cereal bowls, MLB caps, great fun at Condors Town, great crowds all season. Looking forward to the playoff push. When we come back, Jordan Osterley will join us here on the program. We'll get his thoughts on being here in Bakersfield. Also, his second year in the Oilers organization. Ryan Jones will come on. We'll make some picks. The record Jonesy. is going very well for myself. I don't know about Bartle. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll come back with that, though. <laughs> Bakersfield.com, I-45. Don't go anywhere. This is Condors Unleashed.